Welcome everyone to our first interview series we are starting as part of the Multilingual Mind lecture series. Here we will be interviewing the speakers and asking them different questions about their research and their background. The Multilingual Mind lecture series will take place every Tuesday from 5 to 6.30 and everyone is welcome. During the lecture series, the speakers will present their research findings on multilingualism across different disciplines. For example, linguistics, psychology, neuroscience, or speech and language pathology. You can find the link to the program in the description. The first speakers at the lecture series are Professor Theo Marinas and Dr. Duigo Oeske, who will be giving their talk on the 3rd of November. Their talk will be on how do bilingual children acquire complex syntax in their heritage versus majority language, Turkish English speaking children in the UK. We had a chance to speak with Professor Marinas. He is professor of multilingualism at the University of Constance and is currently leading the EU project Multimind. He is also director of the Center for Multilingualism at the University of Constance, which is part of the international network Bilingualism Matters. We first wanted to know how he experiences multilingualism in his own life. Let's see what he has to say. That's very interesting because my background was monolingual. So I grew up in Greece in a monolingual family where the only language spoken in the home was Greek. At school, I started learning English and I also started to learn German. So I had English as a second language, German as a third language. Then I decided to study German. So German became the strongest uh, foreign language. Um, I also spent some time in Germany. So, so German really became a pretty strong language and, and English, a pretty weak language for me. And then I moved to Germany. Interestingly, although I was living in Germany, all the reading and writing was in English. Uh, and so I was communicating in German with everyone around me, but all the academic reading and writing was in English. And then I moved to the UK and I spent almost 20 years in the UK. So at that point, English was the strongest language. I was hardly using any German at all. Now, three years ago, I moved to Germany. And so now, in, when I'm in town, when I'm with people around me, uh, I usually speak German. But for work, I use English because I'm teaching on the MA in multilingualism, which is an English taught program. And so at work, in terms of oral communication with my students, it's English. Academic reading and writing is English. And German is in the every other activities in my life. Now, in the home, we speak English because my partner is English. So, so it's very interesting that I have English and German. Now, when I speak with my parents and my friends back in Greece, then we speak in Greek. And we, we do throw some English words. Another interesting context is when I speak with my cousins who live here in Germany. With them, we mix German, English and Greek. And so we do a lot of code switching and code mixing. And it depends on the context. It depends on what we're going to say, how we're going to say it. And, and that is a very interesting experience to, for someone to observe us, how do we communicate using all three languages interchangeably. Uh, so now that I'm in Germany, I, I truly use all three languages, and then it depends who I'm, who I'm communicating with, what is the purpose of the communication, and um, what, is the, what is the intention. We also wanted to know what motivated him to start doing research on multilingualism. If you had asked me this question 20 years ago, uh, I wouldn't have thought that I would be doing research on multilingualism right now, because when I started my research career, my first study was on monolingual children. So I wanted to find out how monolingual children are developing the language over time. Now, after completing that study, I started doing research on second language acquisition and bilingualism. And at that point, we started using language history questionnaire with all our participants. And pretty quickly we realized that the people we thought were bilingual were actually multilingual because they had learned more than two languages. And also the people who we thought were monolingual were sometimes bilingual or multilingual because they had learned other languages and they were using other languages. So by doing research on multilingualism, we're looking at a population which is more representative of the world we're living in. Uh, 
So this is the main motivation that I'm doing social multilingualism to address language development in a more kind of realistic, um, using realistic categories and also a more represent, doing more representative studies. So that's it for today. Thank you, Professor Marinas, for taking your time and answering the questions. We hope that you enjoyed the interview. We would like to invite you all to the Multilingual Mind lecture series. And if you want to join, you can find the link to the Zoom room in the description. I hope to see some of you there.